Okay, so let's see if you can correctly interpret what this basic math problem is saying. And more importantly, let's see if you can get the right answer without the aid of a calculator. All right, so here is the question. We want 7 eighteenths more than 3 fourths. All right, so we have this phrase right here. 7 eighteenths more than 3 fourths is how much? Well, we have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at our answers. So uh, the first choice, A, is a mixed number fraction, so that's 1 in 5, 30, uh, 5 over 36. B is 12 uh, nineteenths. C is 8, and D is 7 over 5. All right, so one more time, no calculator. But if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so one more time, we have this problem, and we wanna know 7 eighteenths more than 3 fourths is how much, and we're not going to use our calculator. All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer is A, 1 and 5 over 36, or 536. So it's a mixed number fraction. Now, it's possible some of you did this right, but uh, you have an improper fraction, and an improper fraction, matter of fact, let's have a quick, quick uh, mini lesson on fractions. So uh, a fraction has two parts, a numerator and a denominator. The top uh, number is the numerator, the bottom number is a denominator. So when the bottom number is bigger than the uh, uh, top number, the numerator, so like in this example right here, this is a proper fraction. But if you have like four over three, where the numerator is bigger, that's an improper fraction. And these type of fractions can be uh, converted to uh, mixed number fractions like this. So we have mixed number fractions, improper fractions, and proper fractions. So uh, double check that uh, you may have the correct answer as an improper fraction because we're going to have to do some division here as well. So this is gonna be an exciting a uh, problem for those of you that love arith arithmetic. But uh, anyways, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you definitely appear to be a certified professional expert in the area of adding fractions and converting an improper fraction into a mixed number fraction because this is the answer. All right, so let's go ahead and get into all this right now. So here is our problem. And the first thing that we need to do is interpret what this thing is saying. So we have 7 uh, over 18. We want 7 eighteenths more than 3 fourths. All right, now how do we figure out what this problem is saying? Well, one thing that is a, a fantastic little uh, technique that you should use in all math problems when you're confused and you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm just generally confused. I have no idea what this problem is even saying. Well, uh, two things you can do. One, we have a multiple choice question. So if you're not even sure and you're taking a, a you know, math exam and you encounter a question like this and you're like, well, you know, I'm just going to take a guess. Well, that is not a bad thing. Just take a guess unless you're going to get penalized for the wrong answer. So never, ever leave a math question uh, blank. Okay, so hopefully you took a guess, but of course this is wrong. So the only way to know how to do this problem is to understand the math. So this technique that uh, you want to keep in mind is that we have fractions here. So sometimes if you replace, you know, fractions or numbers that are a little bit more complicated with easier numbers and then think about what that means, it's generally, um, you know, um, a path to figuring out the solution. So for example, instead of seven over 18 more than three fourths, what about three more than one? Or right, three more than one, what does that mean? Three more than one. Well, if I have one and then I have three more, it looks like we want to add three to one, 
right? So we're just basically adding these two numbers. And because we don't have any negative numbers here, or we're not dealing with a subtraction situation, it looks like uh, all we need to do is simply add these fractions. And that is exactly what we need, uh, need to do in order to figure this problem out. So what is 7 18ths more than 3 fourths? Again, if you're confused uh, with this type of problem, always just replace these numbers, these fraction numbers with something easier. And uh, this is a great technique, again, with like algebra problems or other problems. Always uh, try to see if you can construct a simpler version of the problem to kind of model what's going on. Think about how to solve that and then just translate you know, that uh, logic over to your actual prompt, right? So like, what is three more than one? What is $3 more than $1? Well, maybe that's like $4, right? Okay, so uh, basically here, we are adding these two fractions, 718 plus 3 fourths. And so now this becomes a fraction addition problem. Okay, so again, we're not using our calculator here. So we're going to have to figure out what 3 fourths plus 718 is equal to. So here we have 3 fourths plus 718, but 718 more than 3 fourths is 3 fourths plus 7, 8, uh, uh, 7 over 18, right? So this is how we have to interpret this phrase. And double, triple check yourself, right? You know, write it in different ways. Just, you know, have the confidence that you are interpreting these problems. But well, one thing that you learn in mathematics is how to translate uh, verbal phrases into mathematical statements. This is really, really critical. So uh, words like more than, you know, or the difference of, or the quotient, uh, the product, you know, I'm kind of using fancy math terms here, but you need to understand these things. But uh, anyways, I think most people figure this out that we have to add these fractions. All right, so our problem really is 3 fourths plus 7 over 18. And now this is an opportunity for you to show off your fraction skills. Okay, so how do we add fractions? Well, we cannot add fractions uh, or subtract fractions unless the denominators are the same. Okay, so you can see here I'm figuring out the lowest common denominator. So we're going to have to change these fractions, these respective fractions. We're going to have to write them in such a way where they have the same denominator. In other words, 4 and 18, where we have a denominator that has something in common with both 4 and 18, but we want the lowest number that is in common with 4 and 18. Now, technically, that's called the lowest common multiple, but uh, really, we think of that as the lowest common denominator, right? So this is how um, uh, you, we want to approach this problem, is we need to figure out the LCD, and then we need to rewrite these fractions such that uh, the respective denominators have the LCD. Now, you can see I have some work here, and that work is how you actually find the lowest common denominator. Now, some of you might be saying, all right, I got four, I got 18. Uh, you know, you might be kind of, you know, doing some number crunching in your brain. Remember, we're not using our calculator, but you could probably have determined that the LCD here is 36. So 36 is the lowest number that uh, both of these numbers can divide into, right? So we can do uh, 36 divided by 18 is two with that remainder, and then uh, four times nine is 36, so 36 divided by 4 is 9. So that is another way to kind of think of the LCD, the lowest number that both of these numbers can go into, but that's only a way to think about the number. It's not the procedure on how to find the LCD. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. You too, Math Man, you're rambling too much about the LCD. I'm a professional expert. Well, if that's the case, if I gave you like 408, 3 over 408 plus one, uh, 7 over 182, could you find the LCD? Well, at this point, a lot of people would be like, all right, well, I'm, I'm unsubscribing. I'm going to leave your uh, video right now, Mr. YouTube Math Pan. <laughs> I don't want to do that prompt, and I don't blame you. But if you had to do this prompt, you got to understand the procedure, how to find the LCD. And this is a big, big topic, not only in arithmetic, but in algebra. All right, so I'm just going to cover it real fast, and then we'll continue on here. But to find the LCD, now we already know it's 36, right? So we already talked about that. But what you want to do as a procedure, okay, is the denominators, you want to uh, prime factor the numbers in the denominators, all right, each respective denominator. So 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. So we can express 4 as the prime factors as 2 squared. So we always want to express this in terms of a power, right? So 4. Um, 
in terms of its prime factors is the same thing as 2 squared. All right, so 18 is what? Well, we can be like, all right, that's 9 times 2, and then 9 is 3 times 3 because 9 is not a prime factor. Uh, so 3 times 3, these numbers are prime, so we can uh, think of 18 as 3 squared times 2 to the first. Remember, we want all the prime factors of our denominator. So now we have 2 to the first times 3 squared, that is 18. All right, so now we can easily identify the LCD. Okay, now the way this works is you're going to take the highest power. Well, let me kind of back up here. You need to have each of your the numbers of these prime factors uh, represented in the LCD as a product. Okay, so in other words, we have a 2, we have another 2 over here, we have a 3. So we're going to need 2 and 3 in our LCD. We're going to multiply them together. But some of you might be saying, well, do we multiply 2 squared, 2 to the first, and 3 squared? No, 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 because we have uh, two, um, uh, two, two powers of 2s here, right? So 2 squared and 2 to the first. Which one do we use? Do we use both? Well, no, okay? You only use the highest power. So this is the highest power, 2, 2 squared. So we uh, use this in our LCD. So that's going to be 2 squared, but we need our 3 squared as well because we need all these prime factors represented. So 2 squared is what? Well, that's 4. 3 squared is what? That's 9. 4 times 9 is 36. This is how you find the LCD. Now, again, a lot of people are not going to do that because they can kind of just determine uh, what the LCD is because these are basic problems. But as the denominators get more challenging, you need to understand this procedure, which means you need to understand prime factoring and, you know, of course, how to build your LCD. Really, really important stuff. But uh, all right, so now that we know the LCD is 36, what do we need to do? Well, we need to change each of these uh, denominators such that um, the denominators are 36. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so uh, before we get into that, I need you to take a good look at this and say, well, I think he's going to ask me to subscribe to uh, his channel. And indeed, you would be correct. Um, I definitely need your support, okay? I'm not afraid to ask for help, right? See, I'm not afraid of that word because I have a goal. If there's two words that you want to have in your vocabulary, uh, the first is having a goal. Now, it could be any kind of goal, but just have a goal in your life. Hopefully, you have multiple goals, all right? Maybe you want to get in shape. Maybe you want to uh, get better at math. Maybe you want to make a million dollars. Whatever the case is, you need to have some goals. But Oftentimes, you're going to need some assistance to get uh, to where you, you know, to achieve your goals, right? For me, my goal was to grow this channel as large as possible because I know I'll be helping more people in math, okay? I'm all about helping people, and I actually need your help to be able to help other people. And YouTube really does count how many people subscribe and hit that notification bell. So all these little, you know, um, activities on my channel really helps me help other people, okay? And hopefully you're getting something out of this video. But, uh, you know, I'm very, very passionate about teaching math, primarily because math, you know, I mean, I love the subject of mathematics, but I've seen this happen too many times where people, and I've, this, I have countless, you know, um, examples of this, you know, through the years, many, 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 I, I can't even count how many people I know that had a bad learning experience in the 1950s, 1960s, 1970s, where literally some teacher told them, hey, you're bad at math, or they failed some math class, and they, no one kind of was there to help encourage them. And people struggled for decades thinking they were bad at math, and it had a huge impact on their life uh, to the degree where, you know, maybe they, did, they went off in a different direction. Maybe they wanted to be an engineer, and they didn't. And I'm like, boy, if it, it, it was just one you know, teacher or something happened can have a, a huge impact on the trajectory of someone's life. So I'm very passionate about encouraging people that don't give up on math if that's what they want to do. If you want to learn math, you can be successful. So don't let anyone tell you, especially a math teacher or anyone, say that you can't be successful in math. I'm here to tell you that you absolutely can, but it takes work, time, and most importantly, it takes great, clear, comprehensive math instruction that you can understand. So if you're interested and learning more mathematics, check out my full main math courses. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Matter of fact, the things that we're talking about here is like basic math. So for those of you that want to relearn math, you want to check out my math foundations or math skills rebuilder course. I cover all this LCD fraction business. But let's get back to this problem here. All right, so now that we know that our lowest common denominator is 36, 
we need to change each denominator such that it's 36. All right, so how do we change a 4 to a 36? Easy, we need to multiply it by 9. So that means we need to multiply the numerator by 9 as well. Remember when we're uh, rewriting equivalent fractions, uh, whatever we need, whatever adjustments we need to make has to be the same for both the numerator and denominator. So 9 times 4 is 36, and 9 times 3 is 27, so we have 27 over 36. If you saw this fraction walking down the street, you'd be like, hey, I can simplify you. I can reduce you down to 3 fourths, right? So they are the same fractions, but this fraction has 36 as its denominator. Okay, so how do we change an 18 to a 36? We're going to multiply by 2, so we're going to multiply the numerator by 2. So we're going to end up with 14 over 36. And now we can actually add these fractions because the denominators are the same. So what you do here is add the respective numerators. So 27 plus 14 is 41 over 36. Now, if some of you got to this point, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, I would give you a happy face, but here is a problem. Okay, this 41 over 36 was not a choice. Let's go back over here to the question on our exam. And this can happen. You're like, all right, I'm looking for my answer here. I don't see it. I don't see it. What's going on? You know, did I do this wrong? No, 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 no. What you have to do is look at the answer and be like, well, maybe this is the correct answer. It's just in a different form. And that happens all the time in math. All right, so we're going to have to take the next step here. So 41 over 36 is correct but that is a, an improper fraction, right? So in other words, the numerator is bigger than a denominator. So we could change this to a mixed number fraction. And how do we do that? Well, we just do some old school basic uh, division, paper and pencil kind of stuff. So you're gonna take 41 and divide it by 36. So 36 goes into 41 one time, right? So one times 36 is 36. We're gonna subtract and uh, 36, uh, um, we're going to subtract 36 from 41. We get 5. 36 can't go into 5, so we have a remainder 5. So uh, thir 41 divided by 36 is 1, remainder 5, but this is not the way we write it. Okay, so 41 divided by 36, again, that's the, equal to the fraction 41 over 36, is 1. Now, the remainder is going to be, uh, we're gonna, what we're going to do is going to write 1. We're going to put that right there, and then we're going to put our remainder and then our denominator is going to be 36. Okay, so 1 and 5 over 36. Now, this is a mixed number fraction. And if I said, hey, write this as an improper fraction, what you would do is you take 36 times 1 is 36 plus 5 is 41 over 36. So you got to know how to go from a mixed number fraction to an improper fraction and an improper fraction to a mixed number fraction. Again, we're talking about basic math stuff here. And as I indicated, you know, no calculators were allowed on this little exercise, okay, other than the one right between your ears, your little supercomputer right here. And that's far better than any artificial intelligence. Matter of fact, that's actual intelligence. But here's the deal. Unless you practice all the skills that you've learned, you know, and typically we're not going to be practicing these skills with paper and pencil because we're constantly on, you know, our... Uh, calculators, our computers, our phone, you know, and they're great tools. And don't get me wrong, I love technology. I, I couldn't reach you without technology. But, you know, mathematics is far more than just, you know, um, breaking out your calculator. You've got to understand these concepts, especially things like the LCD, because you're not going to be able to use your calculator in like algebra problems, all right, where there's variables or whatnot. You're just simply going to have to know the material. All right, so hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.